So in the previous videos, we looked at the GP2X The Black Edition. This was basically the F100, if I'm saying it correctly. The personal entertainment player from Korea. A product that I find quite interesting and also very fascinating. Simply because this was back in the day, one of those handhelds you can pick up to play some emulation. We also did a quick teardown to see what is even inside the machine. But in the end, I did have some issue with mine. It had some faults, for example, it was getting really hot on the right side. But despite that, it had some emulation problems when it comes to PlayStation 1. Maybe it's due of software, but it can also be the problem that this thing is just not like capable of running it. The product itself was made by the company Game Park Holdings around 2005 from Korea. Yeah, so this is not unpacked from China. They created this product basically on the successor of the first model and they just wanted to have more functionalities. So they added a touchscreen to begin with. They removed the joystick and they gave it just four separate buttons to make like a D-pad, make it easier to navigate. But also the touchscreen will give us more games to play, more touch-based games. And these are like one of those handhelds I just wanted to check out on the channel. If you didn't see the other one, I would recommend checking it out. But it's quite interesting to see what they all have made back in the day. Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome! that you're tuning in. In this video, we are going to take a close look at the GP2X, the F200. And this is like an all-in-one personal entertainment player and not from China, but this one comes from Korea. I would not be surprised that this is just going to be a nostalgia trip for a lot of people because the GP2X F102 is absolutely like one of those multimedia devices that you could pick up. This was in the time that a lot of fancy companies like the Pow Kitty or the Emmernick or Cool Baby making like, like a shitload of these devices that you can play some games with. Think about homebrew, but also like watch some movies. In the previous video, we talked about the GP2X Black Edition, and it was more like the early version, but now they are back with this new version. And the question remains, how good or how bad is it? The first thing I already can see, you can see in the picture over here, if you're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison, that they will have a stylus. So in other words, this thing has some touch capabilities. Think about it like the Nintendo DS. So that's quite interesting if you ask me. Let's take a close look in the inside. So I picked it up some time ago and I just wanted to review it here on the channel. I just want to take a close look at some old stuff. And not like the old stuff like in Game Boy, no, like stuff they made in Asia. So the first thing I'm noticing, this thing is quite heavy and feels very comfortable. And yeah, it's just a completely different new thing that you just need to try if you're a big fan of handhelds or is it something that you completely need to avoid so that is something we're going to find out today and yeah it comes with a stylus i don't know if this is going to be the original one but somehow there is a stylus with it let's see if we're going to get more in it and let's see the precautions when removing your sd card some quick user guide with explanation how everything works in english to begin with and here we have some more paperwork. Let's see the operation instructions. And it even comes with a driver setup, something that we don't need. And here you can see already it's in English and Korean. Okay, so this is basically what we're going to get inside the box. So let's put everything back in and let's boot up this boy boy. And let's do a quick overview because I want to touch it, baby. And I want to play some games. So when you're looking at this GP2X, this new model, it looks very similar to the previous one. We're going to take a close look at that later. So first, let's take a close look at the handle itself. What are we going to get? So we're going to get ourselves like the four directional keys. Then we're going to get ABXY, select start volume at the front, two stickers, stickers, and we're going to get a volume at the front. Very nice because that's something I'm missing out, good volume. Then we're going to get that external port. I already have this cable in my possession, thanks to an other fellow collector. So basically you can charge it, data transfer stuff like that. Here at the left side, we're going to get the on and off switch, shoulder buttons, and I must say, these things are very comfortable. We have a battery compartment, so that is quite interesting. We don't have a built-in lithium battery or something like that. Nope, not at all. We also have got a DC port in here. That's the tiny barrel jack and a separate mini USB for data transfer. Because this thing has some built-in memory, but I also can extend it with the SD card you can put in here. And of course, we do have an audio jack. So when it comes to functionalities, it was quite, let's say, extended when it comes to these, let's say, older devices. Nowadays we're spoiled, nowadays we do have like HDMI functionality. But let's power it on and let's see what we're going to get. Here we do see it like... And power LED. Alright, so let's see what we're going to get. Open 2X. I'm guessing there are different kind of operating systems. Wouldn't I be surprised that it was basically what you're going to get with these devices. You can mod and you can mess around with it. 
Alright, so let's take a close look at the menu. Yeah, the brightness of this device is absolutely not great. So, where's my touch? Ah, oh, there's my stylus. <laughs> so that was pretty damn cool that you can just navigate through it. Here you can see like, you don't need to touch it very hard to get it working. So basically the idea behind this thing was like, you have this product that you can watch some videos, you can listen to some music, stuff like that. It's quite an interesting way. Yeah, nowadays we did have like the PSP that came out like later on. A lot of great stuff that also had the same functionalities. But here you do like the option to use the NAND memory, external storage, and do have like the SD memory cards. So this device did have like an, a lot of options. But when you're looking at this device, it's quite similar like the previous one. And I'm guessing that still runs on the same software. This thing does have like a touchscreen calibration. Don't need it because it seems to be working just fine. I can also use it with the finger, but it doesn't not like work that great, of course. And some basic applications. But the thing that is most interesting is also you can play some games with it. That makes this thing pretty damn cool. All right, so let's go to the compatibility. Let's see, I can open it up. I say touch screen doesn't work that great when you want to touch something it's not that like that accurate or that sensitive to be honest we do have like some options over here video game what i do like about this thing you still can find some information about it and some let's say homebrew games so let's go to the sd card here you do have like an indication what you can do with it for example we do have emulator packs so amiga atari clickovision some capcom arcade systems game boy game advance mame and this thing was capable, when I say it's capable of running PlayStation 1 because it's just something you need and we just need to take with a grain of salt. Maybe if you're going to get some new firmware, tweak around with it, you get it working. But in the end, I just wanted to show you some gameplay just to see what you're going to get with this device. Okay, so I'm just going to be honest, like when you're running PlayStation 1 and stuff like that, it doesn't run that great. Maybe with some tinkering, but I can tell you like, it's quite interesting to see that this game actually runs. You know how many freaking devices I've reviewed. A lot of my wicked family who follow me around for a very long time now know I've reviewed a lot of these cheap China handhelds and they all suffer with the same problem. But the combination with this handheld and the Pico Drive emulator, it runs just amazing. And the sound, it's great. But you can see it freezes. And do you know why this is? Because the batteries, they're not super bad or something, but they're not they cannot handle like how much ambient pull from the batteries <laughs> ah, i did notice in the past that we did have some issues that they're getting really hot maybe get some better batteries but oh, next attempt i don't do that anymore wicked nope okay wicked attempt number two the thing i just wanted to show you that the game runs absolutely great and the audio on this thing is cool man like Another thing also, like the separate buttons that need to be the D-pad. I'm, I'm not a big fan of it, but it seems to be playing just fine. And I would understand if you're going to mess around with the firmware, you're going to see like some better performance. Like this runs like shit. I'm just going to be honest, this, like, this is horrible. So that's a little bit of a bummer. I don't know if there are like bitter Pico Drive emulators out there. But in the end, <clears throat> yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer. But it's better emulation I've seen with most of these cheap China handhelds. So this old Korean one is not bad at all. Another thing is pretty damn awesome that we do get the option to have a quick load and quick save in this emulator. And we can also like tinker with some settings. So that's something we can do in the future. But for now, I just want to leave it as is. So let's go to the next emulator and just see what we can do more with this device. All right, so let's play a little bit of Diddy Kong. You can see in the left top corner, the FPS is absolutely horrible with this game. There are a couple of emulators out there, so we can maybe mess around with it. Ah oh, crap, I really suck at this game. So yeah, when it comes to emulation performance, it's going to be a mixed bag. Hmm. Okay, so let's get into the 8-bit stuff. And I must say that this runs, of course, very well. I just got kicked in the face. Okay, it's going to be... No group hacking! Wait your turn, bitch. Punch him in the face. Uppercuts! Yeah. But let's be honest, there are so freaking way, many ways you can play some Famicom. But it's just fun to show you over here. Another part of this was the homebrew games that you can play on here. I think it's pretty damn cool. And maybe there were even some familiar games that we have seen on other devices. 
but it sounds just funny. So for example, this is more like a Tetris clone, Citrus or something like this. Let's see, created by in Elements Interactive or something like that. Oh yeah. And let's see how fancy it is. And then that was something that was quite cool for back in the day that we can like play a lot of these old school games. I can't play Tetris all freaking night, you know. And this thing is filled with all kinds of games like this. Freaking awesome. Okay, so, but let's take a close look at both devices. So basically this is the first model and this is the latest. So let's do a quick side by side what they changed out. So when you're putting them side by side, you can see like they are very much alike. There are some major changes for to begin with the display itself. This is of course like one for the touch screen. And that is something the first one didn't have. The first one they went for an analog stick also with the click beneath it. It's quite interesting, basically like navigating makes it slightly like easier. So it's quite interesting concept, but they basically use the same freaking shell. And that's the thing, that's a little bit of a bummer here if you ask me. They just improved it, the concept, they didn't add any buttons whatsoever. Of course in the inside, there we go, <laughs> I feel like maybe some minor, minor upgrades, but just on the outside, it was a new model, but that's it. It was like a minor upgrade. Mm. 